Hi you guys, we're back for part four of Maria's story and she had just started to go to church after a, a very, very difficult life. Okay, so I actually was invited to a New Year's Eve party. I, I didn't go to church yet, but uh, I had just gone to visit my brother and his wife and uh, they were at a discipleship training school up in Canada and they didn't know this, but like I, every, all day long while I was waiting in their room, I just kept playing this one song from, um, I forgot his name, with the beard, the prodigal son. Oh, oh Keith, oh, no, no, Keith, Keith Green. Oh, Keith, Keith, Keith Green. Green. Yes. And I sat there all day long just playing the song over and over and over again like about the prodigal son and, and how no matter what we do, no matter where we go, no matter what's going on in our lives, whether we're with the pigs, we're, we're, you know, we lost it all, we, we've had sex with a million people, we've done drugs, we've killed somebody, whatever we've done, it doesn't matter, that he loves me. That's and right. he loves me today the same as he loved me then. It wasn't like he loves me more now because I'm a Christian. He's always loved me. That's he loved right. me then and he loved me back when I was 15, wild and rebellious. He's always loved me and, and I know that. And so that day was like one of my other turning points because I knew, I said, I need to move out from my boyfriend. I need to surrender my life to God. But this time, not just giving him my heart, but giving him my everything. Surrendering and saying, Jesus, you are my king. You are my Lord. You have my life. You can have me. And so when I got home from that trip, I went to this New Year's Eve party and I got like this major crush on this one guy who I think is a pastor now, which is so funny. But I was sitting there that night and I'm there like with all these Christians, but all I can think about is this good looking guy, you know? And, but anyways, you know, it, it all worked out. I ended up going to church after that, you know? And I, I just like said, you know what? I gotta move out from my boyfriend. And my boyfriend looks at me and he goes, you know, I've been left for a lot of reasons, but I've never been left for God. <laughs> you know? But I just knew I had to move out. And I ended up going to get my mail from him a couple months later, and he was actually having sex with another woman in the living room, like behind this counter. You know, so I was like enraged and I started like hitting him that day, you know, just because I was like, you know, I, I wanted to marry him. And he had actually well, asked it's a good me to thing. marry him, you know, but it wasn't real. No, it's a good thing you know, that he it, broke up. Exactly. So I went to church and when I went to church, what happened is I walked in the church and here I was a mess. I was beyond a mess. Yeah. I was insecure, I was jealous, I was full of fear, I was full of envy, I was full of insecurities, I couldn't look people in the eyes. If somebody was laughing, I thought they were laughing at me. I was just a mess. And there was one friend, she's still my friend, she lives in Thai, uh, Laos, Carol. Carol Barry. And she came up and she just loved on me. And she saw the beauty in me. And she saw something that I didn't see in myself. And, and during those couple years at, at Lighthouse, the Lord started to do something deep in my heart. And he started to, little by little, start to set me free from different things, lies that the enemy had put in my head, the devil. You know, just that Satan constantly feeding me all this, you know, crap about myself, that I was just worthless. But as soon as I started going into church, I also just like fell right into my first husband's arms because I wanted to be loved so bad. Yeah. And I saw that he wanted to be loved so bad. So we kind of just came together. Like I've heard this one expression. We were like two ticks without a dog. That's a good expression. Yeah. Jack Frost that that expression. It. Yeah. And we came together and we sucked the life out of each other. And we were married for seven years, and it was a very hard seven years. And I loved him with all my heart, but we were taking everything out of yeah. each other. And I was a broken person. I just wanted to die after seven years because of a lot of different things that went on those seven years. And brokenness in his life and in my life, and we just hurt each other. And I was more broken than I'd ever been. 
But instead of going to God and just trying to give him everything, I still was trying to go to man. Yeah. You know, and I was looking and I ended up getting married like right after going into the church. And but through those years, in spite of all that, I knew and I grew more and more. I'll never forget because the night I I left my husband, I wanted to die. Mm -hmm. And I, I said to the Lord, I said, just take me. And and he didn't and he said to me, he goes, No, he goes, I love you. And I will never leave you. And no matter if everyone in this world is against you, I am here for you. And that became my second half of my life. And shortly after, the Lord gave me my second husband, who we are now married 21 and a half years. And he's wonderful. I came into my marriage a mess. I was jealous, insecure, just full. Every day I would just harass my husband. And I would ask him, are you cheating on me? Are you looking at other women? Are, you know, do you think she's beautiful? Uh, do you, am I as pretty as her? I, I wanted to have implants. I wanted to have liposuction. I wanted to do whatever I could because I thought I wasn't beautiful. I thought I wasn't good enough. Um, I had gotten really, really overweight in my 20s. I had been told so many times I was fat, ugly, stupid, worthless that I didn't see who I was, and yet my husband, he just loved me the way I was, and and he just would put up with all my nagging and complaining and all of that junk. Well, by the time I was 39, 11 years ago, I went to see this incredible counselor who God used mightily in my life, and he told me, as he sat there and he listened to my whole story that I just told you, and he didn't touch on any of those things. And he started talking to me about a wall. And the wall, a city wall, and in the old days, how the enemy would get into these openings in the wall, like if you read the Old Testament. And he said, now, the enemy can get into five different ways into our lives. Our eyes, our ears, our mouths, our sexual organs, or our emotions. And he looked me in the eye and he says, Maria, how is the enemy getting into your life? Now at that point of my life, I was consumed in fear, yeah. jealousy, insecurity, to the point where I was like just constantly uh, just feeling like I was worthless. And um, I looked at him and I just started we 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 weeping and going, my emotions, and I confessed my sin. And something that had consumed me my whole life, had consumed my mother's life, was broken within two weeks. Wow. Just out of me saying, God, take this from wow. me. Take this thing that is crippling me and put me in chains. And I want to be free because you're the only one who can free me. And every day, I would just sit there and I'd go before the Lord. And I would just start to know, yes, I will be free and this will no longer consume me. Wow. And within two weeks now, that's not that it's never tried to come again. Yeah. But I was I knew I was a changed woman. My husband goes to Asia every year and this was one of his first trips after this whole thing with this counselor. My husband's on the phone with me, he's in Vietnam at the time, and he starts telling me a story how that day he had gone down to the hotel lobby, and this guy called him into this room, and it was full of prostitutes. But my husband is so naive and so innocent and so like sweet <laughs> that he had no idea that he's in a room with all these prostitutes. And the man looks at him and goes, you'll see someone you like? <laughs> and then it was like a light bulb, and he looked at the guy and he goes, oh, 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 no, 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 thank you. And he left the room, and that day I laughed when he told me the story. You were and free. I knew I was free. Because in the past, when he was going to Brazil and different places, I would get sweaty palms. I couldn't sleep for three nights. I could envision him like sleeping around with other women. I was I had been consumed in my past with the insecurities and the jealousies. Wow, and now you were free. Yeah, as a matter of fact, my husband is in Asia right now. He's in Hong Kong. So I just, I thank God because I know there is no doubt in my heart 
that he's the only one that can free us. And it wasn't the counselor. All the counselor did is lead me to Jesus. He knew that all I needed to do is to just confess and to repent. And what is repentance? Repentance in the Bible is to change the way you think. It's a meta metamorphosis. Yeah. It's actually like, like you were saying the other day, it's a co cocoon where we're just trapped. But we all of a sudden can just be free and we're that butterfly. And that's what the Lord did with me. With that. Wow, Maria. Yeah. And, and the same with fears. The last year, I'm going to share this because I know... Jose we're... said we've got how much? Four more minutes? Okay, okay. I'm going to share this last story because this was about fear. I had never been able to be alone. And like I shared earlier about all the, you know, gripping fear that had fear I had mm -hmm. over me all my life. Well, I was going to Nicaragua because we go on mission trips there. Yeah. And I was staying in a hotel and I knew I was going to end up having to be alone this one trip in the hotel room in a foreign country and I was freaking out. So I called you, I called a whole bunch of other friends and all, everyone said to me no, they could not come and share the hotel room with me. And so what ended up happening is I said, Lord, I don't want to be alone in this hotel room. And he started to speak to me and he said, Maria, you're not going to be alone. I'm going to be with you. Wow. And so I get, so then I started getting excited. I'm like going, and he goes, and I want to romance you. I want to be there alone with you. Because when I'm here in my house, I'm never alone. I got my kids, yeah. the dogs, the, my family. I've always got people in my house. So I get to Nicaragua, and the, from the first day, every single day, he started to romance me. And I could sit there, I would wait on him. I would just lay there in the bed, all alone in this hotel room. And it's, it's the Hotel of Angels, it's called. And I would just wait there, and he would just start to speak to me. I would just have his presence. How do you? Me. How does he speak to you? Because some people might know. Just in my heart. You would not just know, audibly. You would just know in your heart. I would know. I could just feel his tangible love. I could feel his presence. I would see things just like just these visions of just just heaven and just beauty and just splendor and just just his. It, I would sometimes lay there for like two hours, just like that. Listening to music? Yes. And then we would go out and we would have our days where we were out ministering with people and just pouring his love out to others. But every day being filled before I could go out to, to pour and out And you had love. no fear. And, and I had no fear. Point. No fear. So one of the nights we ended up praying with this guy who was totally full of demons. And he almost attacked the lady that was with us. And he did not get delivered. It was one of the freakiest experience that I've ever had with demonic. Well, anyways, when we left there, get back to the hotel room, I'm there about to take a shower, and as I'm in the shower, all of a sudden I see this scene from the movie The Shining, you know, the stabbing you scene. Mean, you mean the um, Psycho? Uh, psycho? Oh, okay. When yeah. she stabbed in the yeah, shower. Yeah, the Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and I see it, right? And immediately I knew because I know if you allow fear to come and fester, it will start to come and it'll come like a flood. Yeah. Okay. But if you reject it, it will go. So I immediately rejected it and I just started to focus on the Lord and focus on his presence and the fear gone, the image went and no fear was allowed to come in. When I got out of the shower, it was fine. I laid down in bed, I turned off the lights. Second point, right? Again, the fear started to try to come. Jose said one minute. Sorry. I said, the fear, you've got to leave in Jesus' name. I just started to press, in, press into his presence, just started to ask his spirit to come and overcome and take me. And I went to sleep, just like when I was a little That's girl, a in oh, his wow. arms. And I had no fear. And remember, one last story, when I was in the, the other room, in the other hotel, he even spoke to me in Spanish. Oh yeah, Esta I remember. We were there that trip. A key? Am I saying? And right? she doesn't even know Spanish. Right. Which meant only in this place. Yeah. And so, what am I saying to all of you? I'm going to tell you. Did, no. Did it? Was it solamente? Oh yes, as uh, uh, something like that. Solamente. I wrote it down yeah. because yes, yes. So. Um, wow. Yeah. She doesn't know Spanish, and he spoke to her in Spanish, and yes. he translated. Yes. Maria and Jose said we have to, okay. but 
Thank you so much. It's been amazing. And if make sure you watch all of her story, the four the four um, sections because it is so. It, it's like watching a movie. Thanks, Maria. Oh, I love you. I love you too. Oh. <laughs> I just heard your voice. <laughs>